Now, I'll make a little one here on improvised oil lamps. Now, of course, you can go and get a new kerosene lamp. I recommend that over getting a um, old one because kerosene's a degreaser and de-waxer and it mightn't like the oil. So if you get a new kerosene lamp or citronella oil lamp, um, you can just put oil straight into them and you know use vegetable oil, whether it's you know corn oil, peanut oil, stuff labelled vegetable oil, um, or as I use canola oil or olive oil. Uh, there is one I don't really recommend. That's avocado oil because it is seriously flammable. And I mean, you're liable if the whole thing will just catch on fire. It's... Until you pour avocado oil in an open fire, you don't know how flammable that stuff is. Um, but avocado oil is pretty rare to come by, actually. Um, grape oil is another one. Grape seed oil. Um, that's also very tasteless and that, and, but that's quite expensive. So how do you go about making an improvised one? Let's say theoretically, you know, there's a few issues with a, a power station or you're moving off grid um, or, you know, you're forced to live in the back of a van or whatever and you don't really feel like spending a hundred bucks on a solar system because you're not quite that financial just yet. Um, you know, and of course you might want to get some candles. One of the things that I <coughs> sort of regret in a way here, my uncle did have a heap of vegetable oil that he got from out the back of restaurants and there was a lot of it. And I ended up just opening the lids and, and basically throwing them in a fire and letting it all, you know, burn out. Um, but I could have used that for lighting. So we're going to, I'm going to show a couple of different jars and stuff. Um, and basically the easy way is just to get a jar. Now some of them have paint on the top like this one. That's not the best but it's still alright I think. That one's a bit better. I think that's some sort of a metallic coating. Um, that's some little French capers or has been. I've got a few dry ones of these, but this one's still got a bit of liquid in it. It's a gherkin um, thing, gherkin jar. You can get some really, really, really large sauerkraut jars. I've got some... Oh yes, i got one. Just wait a second. Yeah. Look at that, it's nearly the size of my head. It's probably bigger. That's sun-dried tomatoes. And you get sauerkraut ones like that too that are really big. But, oh yeah, here's olives. That's a very tall, skinny one. Um, the container doesn't really matter so much, just so long as where the wick comes out and where it's burning, it's not near a plastic lid or something stupid like that uh, that may catch a plastic lid on fire. Um, so you get these things and you, you may assume, oh what do we do, drill a hole in it? Well, it's actually not the best way. The best way is to get a hammer and a nail and if you look at a nail it'll be, you know, four-sided uh, on the end, like a little pyramid on the end. And you sit the nail down and you don't just go thump and blow right through it, you just tap it through just to break open the lid and you'll see because you've hit it with a nail that's got four sides on the point, it'll be like four little flanges, like pyramid shaped flanges with a little hole in the middle where, you know, once you've turned your lid back over. Um, and so it's not just an open hole, it's sort of an open hole but with little prongs so that the wick can't really slip back down inside. Or if it can, you know, you've either done it too big or to get it to do it, you sort of got to bend those prongs out further with a little set of pliers or, or fingernail or whatever. Um, now wicks, 
where do you get wicks from? This is quite a question um, that may be a bit hard. And it took me a little bit of finding, actually. In India, they've got whole shops that just sell wicks. I mean, it's like the wick shop. And I've seen photos of, um, you know, wicks that are bigger than my thumb, um, flipping huge ones. Ones that look like a bit of blooming garden hose, you know, that that's sort of a size, half inch um, garden hose. But they got, you know, all these wicks hanging off racks and the whole shop is just wicks. Um, but that's India, that's not the West. <coughs> now one you'll get in camping supply stores is ones like this. Now that's for kerosene lamps, there's three of them in there, that's replacement for kerosene uh, lamps. They're of course the little flat ones that you'll get uh, with a kerosene lamp. <coughs> the other thing is craft stores seem to have it. And because candle making is sort of considered, a, you know, one of these crafty things over here because they, you know, add in different colours and then try and mix it around and swirl the colours through each other, blah, blah, blah. It's sort of become a craft thing that women do. So you go to these craft stores um, and, you know, some of these, there are some stores that are arts and craft stores. Um, so you go to those stores and you try and find where the wax or anything candle related is and keep looking and you'll find the wicks and there'll be different kinds. I got four metres for four dollars and I'm in a country that rips you off for everything. If you go to the dollar store in the United States, I guarantee you, you'll find metres of it for a dollar. You'll probably get four metres for a dollar and I'm paying four dollars. So go to the dollar store, go to the craft section and really start looking. You may need to ask one of the staff or whatever, you may need to spend you know a bit of time in the craft section looking right up and down the bottom and the top of the shelf you know, to, to find it. But you're liable to find it. Not guaranteed but you know it might be there. But if you've got any of these craft shops and that, yeah, it will be there, almost guaranteed. And there's another little trick I have realised. We have tea bags. Tea bags. And they've got a little string and you go, and drop the string down. But that's one that I have already used and I pulled the bag off the end. These are cotton. I have actually used these. Um, to burn canola oil. <coughs> Saves you having to buy anything. It's right there. I've already got it. And so I just used it. And they produce a very, very small flame. They don't produce a great deal of light. <coughs> or a great deal of heat. But having said that, if you just want a little bit of light for something. Maybe you got a, a child that's used to having a night light on and then, you know, sort of feels afraid to be in complete darkness. Well, set one or two of those up and, and they'll sort of feel fine again because you've got a little bit of light. Um, you know, it, it's sort of, it's one of those things, you know, that it's, it's probably, you know, not as great as you might want it to be, but it will be the most efficient because it is the smallest flame that you can get um, easily. It makes smaller flames than most candles do uh, because it's so fine. Now, there's one thing else you should know. Actually, two things. One is you've got to have the whole show damp with oil. If you light a wick dry, it just burns the damn wick away and, and that's it. So either get a little bit of oil on the end of your finger and like a little drip and then just stick it over the wick and let the wick soak it down so it drips down. But the easy way is just to dip the whole wick in oil anyway. Um, you know, just dump the whole thing under. And don't just sort of dip it and pull it out. Just sort of knead it a bit and squeeze, you know, to sort of draw the um, oil into it and, and get the air bubbles out of it. Um, you know, I don't know, you get a bit of oily fingers, but... You know, this is improvisation. That's, that's what you do when you make things. You, you get dirty. But, um, <coughs> yeah, that's sort of, um, you know, 
the ways you can make um, wicks. The other thing that I was going to say is the distance between the surface of the oil, like where the oil is up to in the jar, and where your wick is, if it's too far, it won't be able to draw it, and then it'll also burn the wick out. So it's sort of better to have a short, flat little tin. Uh, I think it goes quite a few inches though. It may be able to draw up to six inches. I'm really not that sure. Um, I've seen water drawn through a wick up to six inches, but um, that was water, not oil. Um, so you may want to experiment with that one because honestly, I don't really know how much you can get out of the wick in that way. But that's why the fiberglass wicks are good because if you screw up, the fiberglass don't burn. But, you know. It's great if you can just literally use an old gherkin jar or an olive one or whatever, and a little thing off your um, tea bag, and a bit of canola oil from your cooking, and that's it. You know, you you haven't had to leave the house to get this stuff. You know, which may be great in. A situation where there may be looters running around outside and stuff like that that you can have light but it's not safe enough to leave the house um, you know and that'll sort of um, yeah that's another good thing that you don't have to actually spend anything and you don't have to leave the house to make these things um, you know especially if there's something real nasty going down like a snowstorm or a tornado or riots or looting or whatever um, so that's another um, strange little aspect of um, making improvised stuff.